Okay. Oh, move my camera here. Okay, so I got some new, I got another thing to shove in there. It's just a washer. And hopefully that's going to give us enough spacing. I've taken the washer out of the top to drop the screw lower. All that should add up to success. Success. Keeping my... Staying positive now. Staying positive on this. Wishing happy things to happen. appears to be on some cockeyed angle here. Going in very tight. Okay, before I tighten that up any further, quickly hand me the cartridge. Where did I do it? I throw it somewhere? What happened to it? Oh, for crying out loud, it's right there. <laughs> Where's the cartridge? It's right here. In you go again. Might be a little easier to put it in this time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's it. Now, I have to put the needle on to find out. Every time I put that needle on, I risk breaking it. I also risk losing it. What the heck happened to it? There it is. Hey, looks good. Actually, it's right on the edge, but it's not interfered by it. At least not enough to worry about. And that's the LP side there. Okay, let me just tighten the screw up a little bit. Pretty sure it just came out of the clip. Hey, that's pretty straight, but it's ready to fall out. There it is. Just doesn't want to grab this back clip here, and I, I really don't understand exactly why. All right, got that needle in there. Hey, I think I got it. Yeah, it's a little wobbly though. So let's crank down the screw here a bit further. That was a terrible sound. What was that? The sound of oh, it's just the clip coming, just coming off. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm using plastic, you know, it's like you know, it's like self-lubricating. We never get this thing to sit tight. just as loose as can be. Oh, well, now it's tightening up. But by now the screw is protruding. Nope, still not protruding. Ooh, that's good. Okay. I'm a happy camper now. Now I'll just try to... Once again, put this cartridge in. Got it that time. Hands off! I think we got it. Now, 
Now we just got a simple task of jumping the wires under here, as I was showing you earlier. So let's see if we can get at them. Okay, there they are here. All I gotta do is just put a couple little jumpers in there. Easy as can be. my fingers are all black with goo. And I was rummaging around in my one of my containers looking for shimmy material and stuff like that. A moment later I was doing something else. I looked down and my hands were covered with this black cookie tar. Okay, if you do this kind of work enough you'll come across rubber materials that have not really gone liquid, but it's a stranded wire. But uh, kind of gone into like a goo, some kind of gooey stuff. And if you get that on you, it's really hard to get off. It's uh, it's not good. Four inches of solder here. Now that's the blue. The blue is the ground. So this one just goes over here. Tack on there. You know what? It's only a matter of a few minutes before we're listening to this thing play. Maybe I'll tell you what I did, since the videos I shot have no audio, so I can't really post them. I can't really post silent videos. That will not be very good. So what I did, though, in the amplifier, I ended up replacing a three-section power capacitor. That's two sections for the power supply filtering and one section is the cathode bypass capacitor. I ended up putting three new capacitors in. I changed the cathode resistor. It's supposed to be supposed to be 82 according to the circuit diagram. Measured at 95 but the color bands on it said it was 68. That's all kind of a mystery. So I put in an 82 based on the schematic brand new higher wattage one too because often the uh, cathode resistors take a bit of a beating and in these cheap cheap players they go cheap so if you can get away with a quarter watt why not or half watt why not maybe a one watt would be better but oh my god that's a you know what that would cost across 50 of these 50 100 1500 of these units so that'd be seven bucks of profit lost anyway what am i doing oh, i'm going to be soldering Let's do that. Yeah, and how did I end up with videos with no audio? It's happened to me a couple of times recently. First of all, it's because I'm not watching the audio meter on the software I'm using. <laughs> Shame on me. Secondly, sometimes when I'm switching between cameras, for some reason, it switches off the audio uh, input to the software. And uh, I don't know why it does that. Which I find I, I don't like not knowing why things happen. But it does happen occasionally. So at some point, the right circumstances will pop up and I will become aware of why the audio disappears. But 
as I think I've mentioned before, I don't normally monitor my own voice. I don't listen to myself on headphones, although I can do it now. But uh, it's actually a little uncomfortable to be wearing headphones and talking away and all that stuff. So I use the headphones periodically just to check. If I had my headphones on, I would have known there was no sound right away. But for now, I am so sensitized. I see that sheet of asbestos right there. I'm trying my best not to brush up against it or disturb it in any way. That's interesting. When I touch my soldering iron to that terminal, I can hear a buzz somewhere. Why am I hearing that buzz? <laughs> Some mysterious things go on in here. There's something in here is buzzing. Anyway. Watch out, my curiosity will get the better of me. And this is the signal wire, so we'll take it right over to here. This would be a single channel stereo. Now these old record players, uh, often, like the stereo was coming on, and the manufacturers started claiming stereo, kinda, sorta, to fool you in a way to buy a mono player. So for instance, my parents had a record player pretty much like this one. It said stereo on it. But you know what? I only had one speaker. One channel came out of that speaker. The other channel was fed to a phono connector and you'd have and that was right from the cartridge you'd have to have another amplifier and speaker to get the stereo out of it. Right. Of course no one's gonna do that. I think the marketing department just figured out that if they could put that word stereo on there, they're going to sell. And if they didn't get the word stereo, they're not going to sell. So, shame on those people. I'm going to guess that a lot of people don't even know what stereo, didn't even know really what stereo was all about back then. This is the latest thing and i got to have it. Okay, we're ready actually to listen to this thing in a test. So let's. Hoping I haven't broke any wires from too much fiddling here. I'll just set this. Just set this like that. Peek under there. Looks okay. Gotta move it back. I gotta get at the volume control here. There we are. Volume control. You know, something I forgot to do was check for uh, voltages on this. There shouldn't be any, because I am using an isolation transformer. But let's give it a test. Okay, so switch off, power on. And we would really be quite shocked if this shows a voltage. So I'm just checking it to power system ground. 55. Okay, so what? What? Uh, what's going on with the software here? It's asking me if I want to close it. Hmm. Oh, it all seems to be running still. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Man, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder in here. So, 55 happens to be exactly half of 110 for those of you who are into math. 110 being the supply voltage. So let's just pop out the power cord, stick it in the other way. And I'm willing to bet we'll see 55 again. That's the other half. The other half. Here we go. 50. Pretty good. 
pretty much, 55. Okay. So that actually indicates that this is working the way it was intended. I'm not too attracted to touch that chassis. You know, let, let's do more tests here. Let's do more tests. But up here on the record player itself, let's see if it shows up. Now this indicates voltage is getting from the line to the uh, chassis through a capacitor. That's how I interpret that. So we'll, we'll look again. I wasn't kind of jumping to conclusions. So we're back on the AC scale. Nothing there. That's between the chassis and the chassis. Now between the chassis and the system ground. It's the same thing there. So the ground is brought up into this. Not too surprising. So I don't think you can get a shock off something like this. Hey, let's do something. You know what? I used to do this all the time, and I've stopped recently. And that's I get my 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 neon bulb. Look, I got to be honest with you. This was a Christmas gift from my parents when I was about seven years old. So that gives you an idea of what kind of kid I was. <laughs> that this is what my parents thought would be a great little Christmas gift. And look, I still have it. I still use it. So th this will work on slight voltages. Um, it's not lighting up. Could be because I'm not really grounded well enough myself because I'm trying my s to not be grounded. So let me... Uh, find a better place to pick up a ground here. Son of a gun. Somebody give me a ground. Anybody. Somebody. Okay, off the ground terminal of my scope. Will it light the light? Who wants to guess? 55 volts. Okay, these things light up with something around that. 60, 70 volts. Let's see. There we go. Hey, you see it? There it is. It lights up. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna... You can see that quite clearly in the video. That's pretty spooky. What I really need is a low impedance, uh, low impedance meter. And I'm doing that with an isolation joint, isolation transformer. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? How does that happen with an isolation transformer? Because there still is some coupling to earth, ground, to the power line neutral through capacitance, and that slight coupling combined with the pressure, the voltage here, is enough to supply the tiny, tiny current required to light the neon bulb. That's my story. That's my story there. So again, I'm not going to take my shoes off here, stand on the floor and touch this thing to see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm not happy to be my own guinea pig. And stuff like that. But I'm not too worried, not too worried. Because it's working exactly the way it was intended to work. So, so we're time now to, to turn this guy on and play a record. And make sure my video is all working for this. Sound and all. I hate to miss this moment. Here we go. Don't give it full power. Yet. Full power. Full power. Come on. Come on. A little slow starting. Okay. So it's shutting itself off because I'm turning it back on. Because this arm is down. When this arm is down, that signals the record player that there's no more records to play. So we pick it up, slide to the side. Now we'll never know that there, there's no more records. So we'll just keep playing. Here we go. It's supposed to work that way anyway. Over we go. Oh, way over.
sounds a little slow, doesn't it? I think I've lightened this up too much. Now it should it should play it again, but it'll think it's a 10 inch record or a 45. It thinks it's a 45. And it wasn't fast enough. It should shut off. That's what it should do. There we go. Fantastic. I'll keep it on here. That's a fantastic go. Now, you know, I don't have my speed card. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Maybe it's here with all my records. Disco Heat. Sing along, sticks, Beach Boys, and the Bee Gees, but no speed indicator thing. Hmm. Yeah, don't seem to have it. So, sounds a little slow to me, but I could be misled about that. Uh, a little lubrication on the motor might help a bit, but largely, this is a matter of putting it back together. <laughs> oh, thank God. I got another one just like this to do. Maybe I can keep the audio going next time I shoot videos on on the next one. I got to put it back together and then we'll play. Just putting in the last couple of screws here on this. One tube wonder. There we go. Now for a treat. I'm going to get a 45. See how well. Okay, so here's our record. My Island Records. Big record maker, at least here in Canada. This is Pete Wingfield and Barry Hammond, 1975, Canada Island Records. 18 with a bullet. That's why I picked this one. This sounds, <laughs> that sounds great. Got to put on my 45 cheater here. Uh oh, go on there. There we go. Five. Now, this record player should start at the 45 point because this lever is not going to be triggered. In fact, you know what? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's what should happen. So, that's right. I got it. I know what I'm doing. I think I know what I'm doing. Here we go. Power on. Power on. Plug in. No, plug's not in. Plug in. Plug in. Okay, plugs in. Here we go. Just switching it on. Oh, we got it set at the 45. Let it warm up. It's got a tube in it. In a moment, it shouldn't take long. There we are. Here we go. Okay, it's showing all the signs of being too light. So I have the solution for that. We're going to take the chalk back on. No, we're not going to take the chalk back on. <laughs> 
These things are usually adjusted by a spring. Hey, don't come back and turn it over. Just, just go off. Just go off right now. There's the spring. And the spring is set. Wow, not much weight in that spring. It's set quite low already. We'll set it lower. You can see all the adjusting holes in there. And it's already set on almost the lowest one. It's definitely heavier. Let's give it another try. It, and then there might be a copyright issue, so I'm not going to play any more of it. But uh, let's see what the crummy song was. Hey, Jim. Okay, there we go. Take a month of Sundays to understand you now. Lord knows I'll make it one day, and I hope he tells me. Probably it sounds better to me on that side. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I got another record player exactly like this to do. So we'll see you on that.